uh, we're now going to go to uh, the chat. We're going to have a conversation with Kelly J. Keane. So Kelly J. Keane, Posey Parker, uh, has an incredibly popular and fantastic YouTube channel where she uh, talks about what's going on on her mind um, and is just incredibly insightful huge amounts of the time. So what what do you think is going on with this this extremism thing? So the idea of extremism uh, was something that uh, 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 somebody said about uh, Julia Long and myself. And I think where it comes from now is that women, even those standing supposedly on the side of women have capitulated so much of our language that the word woman is seemingly um, abrasive and coarse, impolite, rude, and far too much for the delicate ears of a polite society. And so I think it's that extremism because everybody has moved, everybody's tried to find middle ground, which I think is a nonsensical idea when it comes to women's rights. We either have them or we don't. Uh, if we capitulate any of it, if we share any of our so-called rights, which I understand my foremothers fought very, very hard for, if we give up any of those and allow anyone to come in as an act of kindness, which actually I think is a dishonest idea, I think it's very unkind to women, then, um, yeah, we. it's just really peculiar that that is called an extremist position. I would have thought that was the position. Yeah, and what, what I mean, it must be strange for you because you're painted as an extremist mm. within the gender critical world, like so extreme that you're sort of beyond the pale, really, that a lot of a lot of uh, women would say, oh, no, 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 that's, you know, that's really much too much too extreme for me. And but then your audience is actually much more mainstream on many views. So it's you're reaching just everybody I, I imagine oh so how how do you what's going on there what do you think's happening I don't know we did this protest outside the Lancet yesterday and um people driving delivery trucks uh people like both sexes but majority men I would say uh female ambulance drivers they all beeped and cheered and kind of got it knew what was going on I don't think any of those have read a feminist text. I don't think they've got any theoretical understanding as to why they don't want men in women's spaces. Normal people who do tangible, consequential things in their lives, who have to pay a mortgage um, and live normal, kind of two mortgage payments away from homelessness people, they perfectly understand what's at stake. They have discussions in pubs about not wanting their daughters to walk home alone. That doesn't mean they're not incredibly sexist often themselves, but they do recognise the danger that men pose to women. It's only when you seem to get a little bit lofty in more privileged households and jobs, more comfortable, that people then try and intellectualise this. There's nothing intellectual about not wanting a man in a woman's space. It's a really basic, instinctive uh, compulsion yeah. <laughs> that we don't want men in our space. And so, and what about um, uh, the the Lancet? Uh, you did a demo, and I I I thought, to be honest, I thought some of the people beeping. So I was, I was watching it either live or just afterwards, and it was fantastic because I thought some of them might have been beeping about the dinosaurs because you had these fantastic dinosaurs but will you tell uh our viewers because we have loads of uh women from all over the world and a few men uh, uh what uh what were the dinosaurs for right um let me just assure you that actually we were leafleting most of those people when they were stopped at the traffic lights before they came and beeped so i'm uh, i'm just going to stick to the story that they were 100 percent behind our <laughs> activism uh the dinosaurs is because a politician called David Lammy, who continually covers himself in glory uh, when it comes to women's rights, said a number of a number of things. So David Lammy is in one of the poorest um, parts of London. There is incredibly high rates of child sexual exploitation. Uh, and David Lammy thinks it's fine to talk against safeguarding. And one of the things he said is that women in the Labour Party uh, were hoarding rights and that we were dinosaurs. So uh, actually 
it's old fashioned and we should become extinct. It's an old fashioned concept to uh, keep women's rights just for women. He also thinks that <laughs> in sex reassignment surgery, which I can't find an honest way of calling that surgery what it really is, um, but in what they call sexual uh, sex reassignment surgery, that men actually have a cervix created. So that was why it, it sort of most of the protests and the actions that I do, they start off with a bit of an idea, a bit of a like what we want to achieve. And Katie's idea was uh, the dinosaurs uh, uh, in David Lammy's constituency. And then we looked and there wasn't really anywhere really good that you could sort of talk to people in his constituency. We, so we switched that to the Labour Party and I was already doing a Lancet process, protest. So we just combined the two. Oh, so is, is the the you were outside the Lancet magazine or news yes. like and then did you go to the Labour Party as well? So you did yes. two. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, brilliant. And so one thing is, I I'm interested, and in, I guess some of our um, some of the other women here, where do you get your ideas from, and and you, uh, how do you sort of work out which one's going to work and which isn't? Because I, I think some some women might not know, but. Uh, Kelly J's been running um, monthly speakers corner meetings uh, for the last year, which are maybe year and a half, which are just really well attended and very dynamic and creative spaces and very inspirational being out there and, and politically very powerful. But um, where do you get the ideas to do all these things? Sometimes they're not my ideas. Sometimes they're other people's or somebody sort of mentioned something um, and I'm just a bit of a, well, I didn't know I was a bit of a doer, but I am a bit of a doer. So if someone says something and they're like, oh, that might be an idea. I think, well, let's do it then. Um, let's just do it. Let's see if it works. I don't mind failing. I don't mind being wrong. Um, and so that probably does help me just move forward with ideas. But often it's about everything for me comes from how do I tell people what's happening uh, that's simply what I what I want to do. I want everybody to know what's happening, because if by consent and by fight and by normal, gradual social change, things happen, that's one thing. But this is a top down coercive manipulation of uh, the public uh, against women. So it's just a, it's just about telling people where the ideas come from uh, everywhere and anywhere. It just, I, I'm just the person to actualize them and to, to move them forward. And I mean, one of the things is that existing organizations who have things like bank accounts and structures and they have, they've known each other, say, through a political party for 20 years. And they, they know, oh, yeah, if we're going to Bristol, we're going to call on so and so. And we'll get so and so to speak and we'll get these other people. They've been working together for many years. And it's one of the reasons it's a, so disastrous that institutions are being captured. And you have emerged as a real sort of political force, you, you and working with loads of other people, but from not being part of an institution and how have you managed to, how do you reach people to get people to come to your demos? I mean, that's a big issue. How do we get women on the streets or men and women? How have you done that? Um, I think through YouTube, that's been quite good. And I've been interviewed by sort of other people, some dodgy people, but mostly nice other uh, channels have interviewed me. Um, and so that's been quite a reach. I, 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 you know, a couple of people outside the van shouted, hey, Posey, yesterday. Uh, and then somebody in the pub, I've been on talk radio a little bit recently. And so they said, oh, I've seen you on talk radio. This is all sort of young men. Um, so I think that's how I'm getting them to do it. And I'm not, what I'm not doing when they get there is I'm, I'm not doing what they might expect. So I understand the audience here. Um, but if you mention the word feminism to some of the people who come to my meetings, they won't come. Uh, they don't want to be lectured about, uh, you know, maybe they think that they can't have relationships with their husbands anymore. They mustn't love their sons or they must try and live a separatist, li separatist lifestyle. Now, I don't think that is what all feminists might say, but that is the perception and so I'm not asking people, I'm just telling people what is going on and to make up their mind and basically see common sense. So I think that's, I think that's attractive. I'm not asking too much of people. 
I'm just saying, come and listen. I think you'll agree with me. I'm, you know, it, it's feminism is a big is a big ask for a lot of women because a lot of women don't want to understand exactly what's happening to them. They don't want they don't want to know the reason that uh, they do all of the housework and they don't get paid as much and they get relied upon for unpaid labour because actually there's a whole system against them. They don't want to know about that. So I don't yeah. offer it. I mean, it's it's such a complicated struggle and it's on so many different levels. It seems as if many of us are choosing different ways to work um, and taking different angles and some of them work incredibly well and some of them aren't so good or they might be just doing sort of other work that's helpful. Um, so what you're doing is particular, um, particularly good as well because it's it's very effective. I mean, a, another thing, another question I have is that you, as far as I can see, you get things like seven and a half thousand people watch your, some of your just, like Friday night chats, you just sort of get on and say, and how's that happened? Um, did, did it start off like that or is it, has it always been? The first one I did before Facebook removed it in about two days got about 50,000 views. Um, and that was, that was a long time ago, but I'd been to a, a feminist meeting. I lose I use that word quite loosely because it wasn't feminist. It was very woke. Um, and they had they had a poster up that they designed themselves about terrible toughs. Um, and I was animated and I was quite cross and I can speak quickly and coherently and people quite liked it. And I was relatively funny, I think, and swore a lot and it got shared a lot. And people, you know, I said things I said the unsayable because I think that's I I believe no, that's not my role. It's everybody's role to say the unsayable, quite frankly, but I'll actually do it. Um, and so it just, it was quite popular. So I thought, well, I'll start doing things and and people started watching. And so I continued and it's it has grown. It's grown gradually. I think I've got about 40,000 subscribers now. Yeah, um, it's brilliant. So it's and, um, I mean, the thing that I find interesting is that, we're, you know, Women's Human Rights Campaign, uh, we're a network and we have... 52 country contacts and we have a declaration and a web page and we're working in a sort of in the tradition of the women's movement second wave sort of um uh sort of uh working together being quite collaborative and we've got the declaration on women's sex-based rights which is our sort of key documents and we we try to stick to talking in that language and in sort of we keep going back to that and and we're I think we sort of make a compromise because we don't want to swear like swear or say or, or whatever say too much um that could look bad for the organization I think it's good that there are we are we've developed an organization from scratch in two years but it's also fantastic that you've got the freedom to just say what you think and make mistakes and it's it's not, um, it's not, you're not going to get loads of people annoyed with you. Well, <laughs> do you get people writing in and sort of saying, oh, you shouldn't have said that? No, well, I occasionally do, but it's rarely about my main topic. So it's rarely about women. Sometimes men will complain that they feel there's some anti-men stuff going on. And I really, I just don't have any patience for that anymore. I probably used to say, I love my husband. I've got three sons. And I just think, well, if you don't know about that by now, then I don't really care. Um, but I do think once you collaborate, once you're in an organisation, of course you're restricted because everybody has uh, is invested. Uh, it's pretty much me. And so if I want to say it, I can take the flag. And actually, I don't get attacked as much as people who maybe do try and deliver something a lot more reasonable because I, ju I just don't have any patience so if I want to say a man is a man and actually most of them make us feel uncomfortable if they put women's clothes on if we were all really honest uh, when men do cross dress um, unless he has a totally different feel for most of the, than most of the men I've ever encountered cross dressing they do make women feel uncomfortable and I don't think that's because uh, we're all terrible transphobic bigots. I think it's because most of us have a really guttural instant response to something that we don't feel is particularly honest and poses a threat. And I think there is always, there is an undercurrent of that. 
And I think somebody should be able to, someone's got to be able to say it. Now, I know the lovely Sheila Jeffries is uh, in your room somewhere and Sheila will say it. And obviously she is a terrible extremist, um, <laughs> but she'll say it. Julia will say it. Ju Dr. Julia Long will say it. But there's not many people who are just willing and able to say it without the shackles of the approval of many other people that are relying on um, everybody delivering the same message. And both of those things have an, is absolutely necessary for a movement because you won't, I won't bring everybody on board. An academic feminist is not gonna go, do you know what? That woman who just shoots from the hip with her peroxide blonde hair and face full of makeup, she is the woman for me. How do you cope emotionally with being sort of ostracized by some <laughs> groups? <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Joe. Um, how do I cope? Well, I, I have had moments where it's, I've been really, really, really upset. Um, a couple of times, actually, and one was an organization and one was an individual where I just felt I was I was absolutely enraged and in tears uh, on both of those occasions. But it doesn't last for very long because I'm not in it. I'm sure most of us are like this. I'm not in it for personal glory. I'm not in it um, because I want to find loads of friends. Um, I do it because I think it's right. And so I can't be distracted to those people uh, by those people and by that emotion. And I just compartmentalize it off. And actually, I think uh, the winning is <laughs> the winning um, is in the reaching your destination, which is to stop this assault on women's rights. That's the win. And the win is to just remain quite resolute and not get embroiled in these things because even when I've been attacked, if I say a single word in my own defense, people call it infighting. And so um, I have got quite a good brain for just putting something in a box and just keeping it there and, and not really, you know, it doesn't spin around my head that much. The things I go to, the things that keep me up at night are girls having double mastectomies in the United States of America, not whether some blue tick feminist likes me. I just think that this is the fight of our lives, right? This is, there's so many other things that are happening to women that, that none of those things you can talk about if we're not talking about women, if we can't actually say what a woman is. This is, it's a, I, I've decided this is, this is a, an unreality. That's what we're heading, heading for is an unreality, a severance of family. And I don't mean a, a nuclear mum, dad, kids family. I mean, I mean, familial biological connections. Um, and if we're not standing up and ignoring the noise, and that there are some difficult women in this movement, some very unpleasant women in this movement, but if we can't ignore them, if we don't think what we're heading for is important enough just to, I, I'm, no, I'm nobody, I'm, I'm not important at all when it comes to this. My dispute with somebody is nothing in comparison to the threat the global threat against women. So that's all I want to say.